Hello friends, this video on powers part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Hello friends, this video on powers part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So I think with this you would have got a fair idea about how to deal with the negative exponents. Now let's see that how do we write very large and very small numbers in standard form. So you have already learned about writing a large number in standard form. So how do we write it? We express the number as a decimal number between 1 and 10 and then multiply it by a power of 10. Let's look at some examples. So this is just the recap. For example, 24,000. So this is not the standard form because whenever you want to write it in standard form, you have to write it in the form of a decimal number between 1 and 10. So this is far greater than 10. So how do we do that? So right now, this number actually means 24,000.00. That, that's how it means, right? So your decimal point is actually at the end of the number. So what we want to do, we want to shift the decimal point to such a place such, such that we get a decimal number between 1 and 10. So where will we shift it? We shift it 1 jump, 2 jump, 3 jump and 4 jump. We shift it here so that it becomes 2.4 and then we multiply it by a power of 10. So how much power of 10? So how, much, how many jumps have you taken here? So the point was here and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So total 4 jumps you have taken. So it will be 10 to the power 4. So this is the standard form of this number. 2.4 into 10 to the power 4. Let's look at one more example. Let's say you have this. So you have 12 lakhs. So where is your decimal point? The decimal point is here. So we want to shift this decimal point somewhere such that you get a decimal number between 1 and 10. So obviously you will shift the decimal number here so that you get 1.2 and then you multiply it to a power of 10. What would be the power? The power would be equal to the number of jumps that you have taken. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this would be 1.2 into 10 to the power 6. So in a similar way, when we want to represent small numbers in standard form, there also the logic would remain the same. That is, we would still want to represent that number as a decimal number between 1 and 10 and then multiply it by a negative power of 10. So that is the only difference, that this time you will have a negative power of 10. Let's take an example and understand it. So let's suppose you have this number 0 0.0000021. So how do you write this? So here your decimal point is currently here. So how many jumps you need to make so that you are able to form a number which lies between 1 and 10. So obviously for that you should bring the decimal point here so that it becomes 2.1 and then multiplied by a negative power of 10. And what would be that negative power that will be determined by the number of jumps that you have taken. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this would be 10 to the power minus 6. So this is the standard form for the small number. So the simple tip is that move right by n jumps. So the value of n in this case was 6. And then the exponent of 10 would be minus n. That is minus 6. So you just need to count the number of jumps. Let's take one more example. So this is another example. So your decimal point is here. So from where, so till where do you want to move the decimal point? So do you want to place it here 5.64? Yes, 5.64 lies between 1 and 10. Would you like to place it here 56.4? So that is far way greater than 10. So that's not the right option. So we will make it 5.64 and how many jumps have you taken? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this would be minus 7. So 5.64 into 10 to the power minus 7. So see with this you must be able to understand that how do we represent very very small numbers in standard form and how the negative exponents help us in representing very small numbers. Now let us look at these realistic examples where we actually need these values. So if I ask you the mass of the earth, the entire planet earth, so obviously the mass is huge as you can see on the screen. So if I actually ask you mass of the earth, it will take you a good amount of time to calculate the number of zeros first and then find out their positions. Right? 
so what do we do instead of doing that we represent it in a simpler way so let's see in this case instead of writing this what we do is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 so you basically have some 21 zeros after 5 9 7 2 so instead of writing this we denote it or we write it in its standard form so right now the zero is here so we have to take the zero all through these places and finally we need to make it reach a place such that we get a decimal number between 1 and 10 so do you think if we place the decimal point here you will get a decimal number between 1 and 10 no because 5972 is greater than 10 what if we place it here we will get 597.2 that also doesn't lie between 1 and 10 here no here 5.972 yes this would work out so this becomes 5.972 into 10 to the power how many jumps 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so this would be 10 to the power 24 kgs so instead of writing so many zeros you can just say 5.972 into 10 to the power 24 kgs that's the mass of the earth so it was very simple we just moved left by n jumps and then added n to the existing exponent of 10 so here the value of n was 24 let's take another example where we are trying to find something which is very very small for example the size of a plant cell now as we all know all living organisms they are finally made up of cells cells are the building blocks of living organisms so when you look at a plant cell which is extremely microscopic so its size is around this 0 0.00001275 meters so how can we represent this in standard form so your decimal point is here so we start moving towards right that is we start moving the decimal point towards right until it reaches a position where you get a decimal number between 1 and 10 so that decimal number is 1.275 so this can be written as 1.275 into 10 to the power minus how much 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is 10 to the power minus 5 meters. Now in this fashion we can even compare very large numbers with very small numbers. For example if you try to compare the size of the earth with the size of a plant cell. So how would you compare that? So we know that diameter of the earth is in this range 1.2756 to the power into 10 to the power 7 meters whereas diameter of a plant cell is of the order of 1.275 into 10 to the power minus 5 meters. So let's denote this by diameter of the earth de that's denoted by diameter of the plant cell which is dp so the ratio of the earth's diameter to the uh, plant cell's diameter would be equal to 1.2756 into 10 to the power 7 divided by 1.275 into 10 to the power minus 5 so if you compare this part just leave this part aside so this is approximately equal to 1 so 1 multiplied by 10 to the power 7 by 10 to the power minus 5 so same base different exponents division so your exponents will get subtracted so this becomes equal to 10 to the power 12 so that means the mass the size of a cell of the plant cell is very very small than that of the size of the earth or we can say size of the earth is 10 to the power 12 times the size of a plant cell thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you